right, time for box number two. So we got our Godzilla, and we got our box topper. So there's only one card in these. So there's no way really to slow roll it. Other than the fact that it's backwards, so at least when you open the pack you don't see it right away. So we end up with another turtle, there you go. So we have a turtle as our rare. So we're one turtle away from having our play set in order to build our build around deck. Okay, so box number two. So welcome everyone. This is uh, we're going to be starting off our second box right now. Let's go through and uh, yeah. So this one will go a little bit quicker in terms of a lot of the commons and uncommons you've already seen a million times. Um, oh, there's a wow, that looks terrifying as a comic book art card. Look at that thing, just terrifying. All right, another Reclose and another Karuga. So. Companions for days. Okay, as we chop through these. That's the scatter, pacifism. Okay, Clash of Titans is our card. Oh, a Parcel Beast, that's a new one. So this is, oh, this is the blue-green guy, pretty cool. Oh, I think I see some kind of foily in the back there. Bo Boon of the Wish Giver, okay, yep, yeah, our draw four card. Song of Creation. So I remember, I think I saw somebody streaming a deck with this um, when the format first started. Uh, it's pretty crazy, because you get to play, first of all, you get to play an additional land, then you, when you recast spell, draw two cards. The only, downside, the only uh, downside is you get to lose your hand at the end of the turn. Which, yeah, if you're unprepared, maybe it's kind of a pain, cause especially the first turn you play it. But if you set up uh, set up around it all, at all, I think you're going to be... Uh, Pretty well suited to take advantage of this kind of card. There we go. Foil Trinome, Jeskai Land, in all of its comic book glory. Pretty good second pack, I should say. Okay, another Cavern Whisperer. So let's put that guy over there. Um, another Reconnaissance. Retellion Reflection, still an awesome looking card. Crystal and Hunted Nightmare. If you're playing that card, you're definitely gonna to wanna to place that ahead. Definitely want to be able to take advantage of that effect. All right, as we go through, let's see, Dire Tactics get, I mean, this thing's great in any kind of human deck, right? I mean, obviously I don't think it's expected to see play modern, but you know, that sort of style would be awesome. Wow, look at this Leviathan. Wow, look at that, it's got the claws and like the turtle back. Archipelago. Awesome. And our Fiend Artisan. Da -da 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 -da. I mean, I'm a little confused. Why is this? Why is it so expensive? I mean, I like the. I do like the whole birthing pot effect. Don't get me wrong. I mean, getting plus one for your creature in your graveyard is awesome. But I mean, if they're able to kill it right away, you know, it's kind of a tough sell in that regard. But having said that, though, I mean, if you get to the top of this card, it's just good times for everyone. Foil Flying Squirrel. Well, I know somebody's going to be getting this card. I've set that aside already. Rugged Highlands and our Dinosaur Beast. Right, and a Thieving Otter <laughs> and Wolverines. Man, they got all the different awesome creature types. Unexpected Fang, 
A plus one counter on target creature and a lifeline counter. Pretty sweet. Raven Claws, Evolving Wilds, Will of the Hunter. We've gotten a lot of those. Savvy, Savvy Thundermane. <laughs> Ivy Elemental, my favorite. And the Black Mythos. So this one destroys target non land permanent if it's creature or if green and white was spent to cast this spell. That's pretty cool. So essentially it allows you utility, right? If you're going to kill a creature, it doesn't matter. It's three mana. So it's a little bit easier to cast Murder, but if you decide that you want to kill anything, you know, you're playing Abzan, you can think of it kind of like an Abzan charm, I guess, in that case. Instead of exiling a creature, you get to destroy a permanent. All right, so as we go, I can see another one, a Dreamtail. All right, that's number three of those guys. Valiant Rescuer. And we've gotten half a dozen of these at least. Okay, Sanctuary Smasher, so our first striking guy. And another ultimatum, the Genesis Ultimatum. So look at the top five cards of the library, put any number of permanent cards from among them onto the battlefield and the rest into your hand. So this feels to me kind of, I mean, I think it's got kind of a good, a good flavor for the colors, right? Because you're looking at the top five and putting permanents, it's usually kind of a green thing, but it's also kind of a blue thing too, looking at the top of your library. And our foil. Blister Spit Gremlin. Look at that. Crazy, crazy token. Yeah, I mean, when you get that, this guy, it makes, definitely makes the box a lot more exciting. Though, like I said, I can't complain about that box, though. I mean, if I told me I was going to get two, uh, Alternate Art Planeswalkers, I would have signed up right away. All right, so this is a new one, Alert. Uh, heat Bonder, so at the beginning of your end step, you gain one life for each creature you control with Vigilance. So another one of those Vigilance build around me cards. Our fight is one, so which is pretty good. I mean, for one mana, I mean, that, that effect is pretty strong if you can use it. Heck, even for just using one of the effects, right, which essentially is the same thing. It's target creature getting plus one indestructible. It's pretty awesome, as you saw in like things like the Feather Decks and Heroic, and um, I believe the card that Gave in Truckable and Standard has rotated, leaving you with God's Wound, which is clearly the superior card. But it's nice to have multiple of these kind of effects because this gets around some things like board wipes that God's Wound doesn't uh, solve. Unbreakable Bonds. And a baby in Monsters Advocate. I gotta say, she's one of my favorite Planeswalkers, so that's pretty cool in order to see one of these. And it's, it's, and it's interesting that she does have that. Um, Static effect where you may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast creature cards in the top of your library. And of course, an Ivy Elemental. So yeah, pretty good. And we got more uh, Vigilance and Death Touch tokens and all that good stuff. through swallow hole so tap an untapped creature control exile target tap creature put a plus one counter on that creature that was tapped to pay this it spells additional cost so that's kind of something new that essentially it's giving you a bonus 20 creatures but it has to be first of all you have to control a creature in order to cast a spell so that's kind of a big downside and then you have to tab it but if you do that creature gets a little bit bigger so pretty cool if you're playing like a this is instant speed that card would be just insane um, so yeah, I get to choose with the Grim Dancer if it's got Miss Lifelink, and Death Touch. Two different counters. Lord Draxus, so this is part of that cycle. Um, so this one returns into the sorceries when you mutate. And then the Sea Dasher Octopus. So I've seen this guy in some of those mutate lists because, as you can see, it deals common damage to a player, draw a card. It's got a cheap mutate cost as well. So, the Frenzied Raptor, another Otter, Crazy Bunny, another Cloud Piercer, 
of the comic book variety. Okay, and then this one is return two target creature cards with total man total converter man cost or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a man's counter on the other. That's pretty cool. I always like trading off cheap uh, creature reanimation with like a special effect like this for only and having it for three mana. That's definitely a card I could see, you know, and even like something casual or like EH, like and just getting a death counter and death touch and menace, like that's pretty awesome. A crystal on the Mardu variety. Another Obosh. And a foil Karuga. The Macro Sage. So not bad. Not bad. It's, play it's one of the playable ones, so I'll take it. Really hoping to see a Loris in this box. All right, so uh, let's keep going. Well, I've gotten a lot of these guys recently. Caprador, so if non-common damage will be dealt to it, prevent that damage, put a plus one counter on it for each damage rendered this way. So if this is maybe a little bit cheaper. I mean, this would be awesome against burn, right? Bone Yard Lurker, look at that art. That is, look at the skull on its horns. Like, man, that is one nasty, nasty nightmare beast. So this is the one that returns permanent cards from your graveyard to your hand. So it's tough when you don't really know the cards that well. And you have to then have multiple arts. It's like, oh yeah, that guy, oh, I know the guy, as you're, as you're reading it. And then our classification. So this card seems like it was made like in somebody's uh, personal set, you know, like, oh yeah, I'll just make a creature that's 2020. Yeah, oh, totally. Only seven mana too. With the downside, of course, of it being tapped. All right, dolphins. So many dolphins. So many hunters too. A lot of people hunting these poor animals. Ooh, a second flourishing fox. So as you can tell, this is clearly one of the harder to get uh, uncommons. And there you go, Heartless Act. There we go, our second Heartless Act. Great one to open. And another Ruinous Ultimatum. So if destroying all their things once isn't enough, play two. And then this creepy cat token. That, there's something not unsettling about that art. Let me just fix this for a second. Get the cards a little bit better in view. All right, so we got some jelly. Oh, look at that elemental jellyfish. Cool. Okay. Ooh, pouncing shore shark. I love that. Now that is cool. The way the water looks and everything. That is really cool. Okay, Primal Empathy. So the beginning, oh yeah, this is the one that triggers the enchantment. Yep, draw card, another Caprador. And an Ultimatum. All right, back to back, <laughs> ruinous Ultimatums. So we need to destroy everything for that third and final time. Okay, easy prey. Start target creature with converter man cost two or less. So this is kind of like smother, but I believe smother was three or less. I could be wrong though, because this one does have the cycling attached to it. And that poor little green creature is gonna get mauled by that demon thing with a crazy mask and a, like a hooked sword. Sanctuary lockdown. Unbreakable bond. And another black mythos. So pretty cool. That seems like kind of like the mythos that it's Kind of like the, kind of, I don't want to say basic, but it has kind of like that generic kind of, yep, yeah, destroy effect. So if you're going to play like some kind of like Abzan control deck or something, that's the kind of card you're going to want, given how versatile it can be. All right, so let's see what we got here. Okay, another Cunning Night Bonder. Barrier Breach. This is the crazy destroy exile uh, three enchantments. 
Cub Warden. So when this mutates, create two cat tokens with lifelink. So that's pretty cool. Getting to make more cats is cool. So if you had some sort of cat deck, you know, play a bunch of those. Maybe some other cheaper mutate cards. I mean, that's the thing about mutate. It really wants to play with other mutate cards. So if you have one that kind of works in another sort of deck, it's kind of hard just to play them by themselves because you obviously can't get that trigger again without more copies of itself. All right. So let's see. Dingers. Okay, so another migration path. A crystal, a bastion of remembrance. And a rare, so this one's Gem Razor. So this is destroys the target artifact or enchantment an opponent controls. And look at him. He's ready. Look like you'd be destroying more than just artifacts or enchantments. <laughs> you'd just be destroying people. And that. Okay, and here we go. Okay, another call of the Death Dweller. And the Crystal. Another Boon of the Witch Giver. And a Bonder's Enclave. Oh, huh, I don't remember this one. So, draw a card, activates the ability on control creature with power four or greater. Okay, so it seems like there's like a lot of those kind of effects lately where you have some sort of condition. Um, and then you get to draw a card with it. Uh, there was, I think originally there was one from Shadows that let each player draw a card. And then there was the one that, um, well, I can't, I'm blanking on what the mechanic was called, but when you have 10 or more permanents, then you get to activate it. Which was pretty good, because, you know, later in the game, you just kind of, you know, do you get nothing else to do, you can draw it. I mean, the problem with this one is you need to actually have creatures in place, so it's not that great if you're just, got nothing to do with your mana. I, mean, I guess it's good if you draw blanks, and then you have kind of a board. All right, so we have a Skull Prophet. Another crystal. Back for more. So one of my favorite reanimation spells in the set. It's part reanimation, part removal spell. Followed up by Whirlwind of Thought. So this looks like the Jeskai enchantment. So whenever you cast a non-creature spell, draw a card. So nice and clean. It's always cool when they can do these nice and clean kind of three mana cards. It actually doesn't feel like it's too out of place. But I guess with that card, it, you probably think maybe the white might be the most out of place part about that, but it might just be for power level two, right? It's three colors, three requirements to actually cast it. So our exuberant wolf bear lets you switch power and toughness. Another ivy elemental. Ominous sea. Another bonder's enclave. And a flycatcher griffard. Look at that art. That guy is just killing that... Uh, Flying bug of some kind. Okay, here we go. Okay, uh, Void Beckoner. So this is the cycle and give creature death touch. Will of all of the All Hunter, so the combat trick. Insatiable Hemorrhage. So I think we got the other, yeah, we got the fancy promo of this one. But I will say the regular art is just as terrifying. And Chevelle, Bane of Monsters. So keeping with our Golgari mythic rares of Vivian and the Fiend guy, we get the Bane of Monsters. So I was just reading this guy earlier, so. Essentially what he does is he puts a counter on a creature or plains walking on opponent controls, and then when they die, you get to draw a card and gain three life. He's a 1-3, so his stats aren't amazing, but in the right deck, you know, if you're killing a bunch of creatures, it seems pretty uh, pretty sweet to be getting all that uh, value from it. Especially, essentially, especially I get to see in some sort of aggressive matchup where you can kill their guys, because even he can trade off with anything, right? The small. You know, he's threatening not to block a lot of stuff on his own and then get some card draw going. I mean, just getting a card off at once is probably going to feel pretty good. 
with that guy. Okay, charge the Forever Beast. So reveal a creature and then deals damage to a creature, player, player, creature or player equal to that real card's power. So the cool thing about this is it doesn't require the, obviously the creature to be in play, which is a huge deal, right? Because there's some cards that allow you to deal damage equal to a creature you control. But obviously this one doesn't require. Now the drawback obviously being that it can only hit creatures or planeswalkers. Defang Mentor, a Necro Panther. Look, look at that, just sitting on all those bones. So I don't know who he's, who he's returning from your graveyard if he's got all the bones there, but maybe he's scavenging looking for somebody to bring back. And our second, Luca. So this is a regular non comic book Luca, which is still pretty awesome on its own. I like that his beast there takes up like half the art. <laughs> So again, we hit two Planeswalkers, which is pretty good for a set that I think that only has three, to my knowledge. So hitting two out of three in both boxes is uh, just about all you can ask for. All right. Call the Death Dwellers. Yeah, Trumpeting Gnar. So when this mutates, get a 3-3. Three, three. So this one's pretty good, but it's also quite expensive. And it goes makes sense that that token look like this, given this is art. It makes a 3-3, looks very similar. Polywog Symbiote. So this is the one that triggers off uh, Mutate and also helps you cast Mutate spells cheaper. Skycat Sovereign, not bad. And then Weaponize the Monsters. So sacrifice a creature, deals two damage to any target. I will say that the change that they made to get rid of creature or player and just put um, target is seems kind of weird at first, but the more you look at it, it's actually a really clean answer to the problem. And I think it makes the cards look read a lot easier. And I also got rid of that ridiculous planeswalker, thing, planeswalker targeting rule. Like for instance, when your opponent had hexproof, you couldn't target their planeswalkers, which was kind of silly. If you're looking to redirect the damage from a spell. The only downside, of course, is that now a bunch of older cards you have to look up to see what the wording was. Okay, so we have a sprite dragon, which is pretty awesome. Another back for more, can't complain. And the Symbiote and Minota. So this is a card I was saying in some lists. So whenever non-human creature you control attacks of the top six cards of your library, you may put a human card from among them on the battlefield, tap and attacking against indestructible, put the rest of the cards in the bottom of your library anywhere. So the cool thing about this is not only you get free free humans in the top six that are attacking and indestructible, so it's not like you have to just purposely throw them away, but it's a non-human you control attack. So Literally, the only bad thing is that it's non-human, right? She doesn't have to be attacked, obviously, because she's non-human. But it just seems like a great card if you can build around it. Cheat some stuff into play. All good stuff, all around. Yeah, Chandra, yeah, Chandra got really bad. Like Once you realize you can't plus and then redirect it, not so good. There's Luca. All right, the Void Beckoner, Mystics of Duel, Escape Protocol, and General Kudro of Draneth. So this is obviously what that uncommon that's protecting creature is looking for. So not only do they get a boost, but then he's got two other abilities, right? <laughs> when he or another human enters the battlefield, may I sell a target card from the opponent's graveyard? So it's clearly one of those plan abilities to kind of help out in a format like Modern. And then you can even sacrifice two humans to get rid of a creature. So you know, I'm no humans expert. Uh, I wouldn't go out and say this is going to be a grand slam in that deck, but if I was playing humans, I mean, I would at least certainly look at this card twice to see if you could make some room for that kind of effect. Because the fact that you can get rid of uh, big creatures and also hurt things like dredge in the process seems pretty awesome to me. Right. Oh, I see another mutate. Ooh, a, a bull picky. I'm butchering that horribly. Um, so when this creature mutates, put a plus one counter. So this is one of those generic ones. Um, another Zenith Flare. Awesome. Barrier Breach, that. And we have another companion. So this is the Golgari one. 
So each non-land card in your starting deck shares a card type. So a little bit harder to do, but it also can make stuff cheaper. So this is probably not in terms of like straight power, one of the more powerful ones. But it's one of those things where like if you can build around it and get a you know consistent four mana four five that can make your team or make your cards cost a lot less. Who's gonna who's gonna kick that out of the bed, right? And I can feel you can always tell when you got one of these and you just feel the back and it's like, is that a hole in the card? Alright, so the dolphin. Not the dolphin's always at the front of the pack, so interesting to know. I'm sure there's probably a reason with the way the packs are set up. Our plummet with the poor parakeet. Okay, Clash of Titans. Great movie. Uh, Zagoth Mamba. A Savvy Thundermane. And the Blue Mythos. So this one copies um, permanents. And then it can fight stuff as well if you pay your teamer colors. All right, so let's go and see what we got. Another synonymous Hellbonder. So this is the Menace Lord, I guess. This is our game for life. Another Blitz. And a Laturi. Now, I don't know if you call me crazy, but that looks like it's a uh, Foil Winota behind that card. So let's just skip to that. And look, it is our Foil Ren Renona. There you go. So this box seemed to have a lot more mythics in it. Though obviously we're not we haven't gotten any uh, comic art mythics. But hitting a foil is pretty good. Okay, let's see what we got. A wingspan mentor. So this is a flying guy, Lord Dude. Starks. The Chilling Harvester. Holy cow, they made a ton of these like crazy looking black creatures. Like, this is the Sacrifice Picard and another Quartzwood Crasher. Okay, let's see what we get. Zenith Flare, okay, I'm pretty sure that's a set now, which is pretty cool. Swallow Hole. Our Trample Spell. And an Athroi Apex of Death. So this is, the, again, this is the Abzan guy that returns power 10 or less in your graveyard to the battlefield. Poor guy, though. It looks like he needs a good meal, though. Like, really could use that meal. And a Foil Survivor's Bond. So a lot of these cards I notice have kind of a play in that sweet captain token. Have that kind of play with humans and non-humans. Alright, let's see what we got in this one. All right, weaponize the monsters. Trample Lord. Life Encounter, Mutate Guy. And a Red Mythos. So this deals five damage. Creature Planeswalkers. And then if you played Pay Jess Guy, they can't attack or block and activate abilities can't be played. So it's okay. I mean, the fact that it's not instant means obviously you can't be doing this at combat to kind of stop your opponent from attacking um, until your next turn. So... You can still do it, I guess, but it just won't affect um, anything they play with haste, maybe. Alright, and let's see what we got. Ooh, another Cloud Piecer. <laughs> Ring Moloch. Hornbash Mentor. Crystal. And Obosh. Pretty cool.
I see the foily glitter in the pack. That's a, it's one of those good feelings. All right, let's see. Easy Prey, King's Eye Mentor. That guy, this guy's popping up a lot, Lee. Offspring's Revenge. Look at that little guy. I'm coming to get whoever killed my mother slash father, whoever that is. And behind is the Thundermane. Cool. Looks really cool foil, too. It's one thing about, like, red cards, in particular with lightning. I always found they look really awesome foil. Card itself might be terrible and unplayable, but it looks really cool. Ooh, a Footfall Creator. It's good to have another one of those. The Guru Diamond Danza. Generals Enforcer. Okay, so we got the General now, so now we got lots of ways to protect them. And another Slither Wisp. So this is our Flash Deck build around. And our Sweet Companion Token. So we're coming down to the end of the box. Looks like I think we got about four packs left, so. We'll see if we can hit a Triome or something cool like that. But if not, I think we uh, definitely can't be too upset about this box. All right, Rooting Moloch. Ooh, another 11-11. Chittering Harvester. And a Dranith Magistrate. So this is one of the new, uh, new hate bears. So can't cast spells from anywhere other than their hands. Pretty good. I like that they they put them on two twos. Like they don't make them on creatures that have basically any decent removal you can't get rid of. So Let me give me some outs. All right, another vigilance lord. Ooh, archipelagor. That's a really cool one. Still looks cool. Poor little guy in the boat. <laughs> A crystal and a triome. See, there you go. Our salty, salty triome. All right, two packs to go. You really ask for anything at this point, so we're gonna let them roll and see how we do. All right, hunger, momentum, rumbler. Attacks if it doesn't have first strike, put the plus first strike counter on it. And then when it attacks, if it has first strike, it gains double strike. So that's pretty cool. So every time he attacks, essentially you're just getting crazier and crazier. I like that they did with mechanics rather than just like plus one counters or anything like that. And this is the Menace Lord. Labyrinth Raptor. So when a creature you control with Menace when it's blocked, a friendly player sacrifices a creature blocking it. Oh, that's really cool. So. I mean, it's only 2-2, but, you know, if you have some way to save it or maybe even kill the other creature, then it's blocking really bad. And plus, if they have two really good creatures, you're not going to want to sacrifice one of them. All right, last pack. Okay, Void Beckoner, Parcel Beast. Leave the Stampede, and another Everquill Phoenix. Cool, good stuff. Okay, so let's recap this box. Um, we got our Godzilla promo. And then as far as our other foils, um, nothing really great, nothing to write home about, you know, some cool stuff, but that's not really why you buy that. And I think like these and like these kind of cards are really diminished kind of even regular foils. But we got that guy. Um, as far as our comic book arts go, let's see. One, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. So still did pretty good. We only got five commons this time. So not as many as last time. And as far as uncommons go, we ended up with six, seven, eight. So we got one more. And a pretty good mix. 
you know, did a pretty good job. And then clearly hit it out of the park again with the uh, getting a mythic and a foil rare land, which is pretty nice. Of course, it makes you want to collect them all. And even this guy is pretty cool. It's a gem raiser. Mutates to destroy something for only three mana. Pretty awesome at that point. So that was those guys. And then when it comes to our rares, let's see how we did. I think a mythic wise, we did pretty awesome. So we pull out the mythics. We got one, two, three, four, five. Oops, I put, <laughs> I put some uh, commons and uncommons. That's why this pile is bigger than it should be. Okay. Um, six, seven. So if you think about it, if you add up everything plus this guy, I mean, that's eight mythics in a box. I don't know if I've ever seen that many mythics in a box. Like, That's just, uh, that's pretty crazy getting that many mythics in the box. Like, you know, if you take out this, you know, that's crazy to get that many. Now, it does offset the fact that we got only got three in the other box, but that box still had four, so. And the mythics we got were really awesome, so. And these ones all seem pretty pretty good, so. That's pretty cool. Um, as far as anything else, I think for companions, I think we did roughly the same number. Um, obviously, we cut the foil. And then... We kind of got some of the similar ones though this time. We didn't really get many different ones. So we ended up with uh, five non-foil and, and a one foil one, so. But, you know, overall it was uh, pretty good. I think in the tri I think we got, well, we got the foil one, obviously, and I think we just got that at one other one that I opened in, uh, yeah, the Sultai one, I think is the only one we got. So, we got two in this box, which isn't terrible. Probably hope to maybe get three, but you know. Eight mythics can't be uh, can't be complainers. So, anyways, uh, thanks for joining me today. It was a lot of fun opening up product, and uh, you know when the next set comes out, and any other supplemental products that are interesting, uh, I'll probably do another of these, and you know keep working on it, keep uh, trying to improve. But um, but yeah, thanks for thanks for watching, and if you're watching this uh, after on YouTube, thanks for checking out the channel, and uh, hope you enjoyed uh, everything we were able to do. So with that, uh, I'll be signing off now. Have a good night.